What's going on, y'all? I'm going into an in-depth video of how voices voice lines work and what you can do from each line, starting with one singular card, right? So the first card I'm talking about today is going to be low. Um, I'm going to be going through a, every single card. So this might be a little bit of a longer video, but it's just showing you all the lines that you can possibly do when playing this deck. So let's, let's get right into it so I don't have to waste any time here. Um, but let's first start off with low, right? So if you have low as the only card, we're going to start off with, um, you know, just one card. We're not going to do all the possible outcomes because there's just too many. So we're going to do scenarios where you have a one card um, start, right? So don't think about all the other four or five cards you have in your hand, depending on if you're going first or second. This is just going to be your one card starter. So from low here, you have two options at the moment. You can go barrier of the voice's voice or radiance of the voice's voice right so remember we're just doing one card so if you go from low to radiance um pretty much it ends there you have to you you know you're just waiting to see what happens next we're not thinking about graveyard or hand we're just talking about what you can do with one card all right so we're just gonna normal summon place radiance pass or you can go low place barrier barrier can search any of these cards right here Right, so Sophia, Radiance, Skull Guardian, the Ritual, Prayers, Cerevis, and Low. It cannot search this Cerevis because it's not a voiceless voice monster. Um, so, and these are the options from here. So once you do that, if you search Radiance, you know, you set Radiance, you're done. If you search Skull Guardian, you can't do anything because you don't have, you know, remember, no guard, no hand or guard, uh, graveyard that we're talking about right now so you pretty much just have this in hand same thing with prayers you just have it in hand so same thing you just lead, end it with it in hand and then uh low you just end it end with the low in hand so maybe follow up but as you can see if you go Sephira, you can activate Sephira, send it to the graveyard um not needing anything else and you can you know you would dump the prayers and you'll have a skull guardian or a Cerevis plus a way to ritual summon. So if you say you, you dumped, right, the Sephira, you ended up adding the Skull Guardian to your hand. Um, now this and this will be in Graveyard. You can activate Sephira in Graveyard to banish it. Send the low as tribute, summon the Skull Guardian, activate Skull Guardian, activate low, right? So at this point, you have a number of options. Skull Guardian lets you add a voiceless voice monster. So that would be this, 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 uh, or Ritual. So these are your options that you can add off of the Skull Guardian. When Low comes back, uh, you cannot activate the effect again to get another one of these. So it's once per turn. So you have this as the field. Um, the Radiance is not there for this scenario. It's just a barrier. Right, so I'll take that out the way. Take these out the way. Graveyard field. So off the Skull Guardian, you have options here, right? You can go for another Sephira, which is follow up. You can only activate once per turn, um, and you're already normal summoned. Low also follow up, but you can use it as a full tribute from your hand. Um, Cerevis. You uh, Cerevis will be just kind of dead in hand at the moment because you only have one spell in graveyard. So you cannot special summon it. So that's probably the worst option to grab off of this one scenario. And then you have the Cerevis, a ritual. Um, also, not the greatest choice in my opinion, but it is targeting, just in case they get rid of this, you do have protection from targeting on your monster effect, on your monsters on the field. So in my opinion, I think the best case scenario is to either go Saphir, Saphir is really good, um, to start your whole play, she's a ritual and a dump for this and a searcher. So, Sephira, low. I think you go for one of these either every time, right? But it depends on your hand and graveyard. If you don't have a hand or graveyard, I just say go Sephira. It's the best one. This card is so good as a starter. Um, not as a, as a start. It doesn't really start, but it gives you so much value, this card. So, I would definitely off the Skull Guardian, grab this if you have no other plays. Low is good as a, this is definitely a one card starter. However, um, it can be 
kind of redundant if you already have one on field or in a graveyard. But it is the second best choice here. Just in case they get rid of your field, you can go normal low and do the whole process again. So it is a good op second option. Um, I like Sephira a little bit more. Just because if you already have this established, you should already have some type of follow-up going on. Um, but either one is, is pretty good. Either one is pretty good. So that's the line there, a one though, into a barrier, right? That's your best option. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna pause the video and we're gonna talk about another card starter. Those are all the options for the low. And uh, I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, now we're at the next scenario where we have Barrier, the Voiceless Voice is your card in hand. Say so you top deck it. That's our scenario here. We're top decking. We had no graveyard, right? You can activate Barrier, the Voiceless Voice to search a Skull Guardian, a Low, Prayers, Radiance, Cerevis, Sephira. Okay. If this is your only card, most people will be like, oh, well, you need the Low, right? You want to go ahead and search the Low. So, you know, you'll go Low. Say you activated. Let's, let's move these down so it looks like a real game scenario. Um, and these are just options. This is not your hand. These are just options you have. So you activated Barrier of the Voice of Voice. You activated the effect. You grab low, right? Normal low. The only option here is you can go for another barrier for added protection. Or you can go Radiance, right? If you go Radiance, your turn's done. You have no extender because you have... This is not hand. This is just options. You have no graveyard and you have no, um, no hand. So you kind of just end here, and that doesn't feel good, right? So you you don't want to do that. So if you go Barrier um, into Skull Guardian, you kind of just end with the Skull Guardian in hand. So these two options are not ideal or op, or they're not ideal right now. Um, barrier, you add this to set. Uh, doesn't feel good, so that's not a good option. Barrier to add the Ritual doesn't do anything. And barrier to add this doesn't do anything. So your real true option is just to go Sephira. If you go barrier Sephira, you can activate Sephira. Sephira will dump the ritual to the grave and add you either Skull Guardian or the Cerevis. Okay. This option is the best option because one, you have a way to ritual in, in the graveyard. Sorry, not, not here. A way to ritual in the graveyard Okay, and you have something in hand. So your one card turned into, you know, a plus one or, yeah, a plus one and a way to ritual summon. That's your best option when it comes to barrier of the voices voice. So those are your options. Um, simply, I know, I know your hand and your graveyard matter when it comes to making these decisions, but this is just an in-depth view of what the deck can do with one card okay if you know these lines it's gonna help you uh navigate your hand better and play better overall obviously you're gonna have other options because of your hand and graveyard but knowing these simple ones will keep simplified game states and complicated game states um a little bit more easier to navigate so let's go on to the next card as our one card starter okay if you start off with a Sephira, or you top deck a Sephira, obviously the only play to do really is to activate Sephira, send the prayers to the graveyard, and add either one of these two. Um, if you want access to engine, you go uh, Skull Guardian, and hopefully you can ritual summon. Um, hopefully you can ritual summon them, summon the Skull Guardian, or if you just want, you know more protection or add protection because you maybe have something in hand already, you can go ahead and grab the Cerevis. But ideally you want to get engine. So this would be what you can do off of one Sephira. It's not much. So as you can see, your real one card starter is only low. All these other cards are going to need additional pieces to go ahead and combo off. So with that being said, low is priority. Uh, you want that in your hand starting off. Um, that's, that's going to be the best way to play and navigate these combos. Sephira is the great additional piece needed, right? She's paramount to the combo. So um, Sephira doesn't really do much. As you can tell, the spell doesn't really do much. 
And then, you know, everything else, like the Saravis, the prayers, they don't do things on their own. They need additional follow-up. They need additional follow-up. Their Radiance doesn't do anything on its own. You know, Skull Guardian doesn't do anything on its own. It needs to be able to ritual. So those are your lines off of one card, right? If you want this to turn, I can turn this into a combo video just to show you what you can do, which I probably will end up doing anyway. But that's just what you can do off of one singular card with this in-depth review of Voices Voice. So I thought I should cover all bases. So the next part of this video is going to be what two card starters can do. We're back at it. We have a two card combo here. Um, something that you always want to see is, you know, a barrier or a low in your hand. Both of them together just add additional steps that you can take. So let's go ahead and see what this hand can do. Right, so you're going to activate low. From low you have two options here. You can go radiance or you can go another barrier. Let's say for this circumstance we're going to go barrier. Um, sorry, not barrier. We're going to go Radiance, okay? Because um, two bear is redundant. You don't need to for, for, for going first. So yeah, you can do another one if the scenario makes sense or if you already have this in hand and you obviously go for another barrier. But for this, we're going to go Radiance, okay? Radiance doesn't do anything right now, clearly. But what we do is we go ahead and start off by... Um, not start off, but next step is Barrier. Activate Barrier. You have options here, you can go Sephira, or you can go straight into, you know, any of the other cards. These, uh, this one, or low. Clearly, uh, the best option here, since you already normal summon, is not low. You have nothing to ritual summon. These two don't do anything right now, but they will eventually. So the best option here is clearly Sephira. So you grab Sephira. You activate Sephira, okay? You're gonna dump the ritual spell in Graveyard and you're gonna add yourself a Skull Guardian. You could also add the Cerevis, but the Cerevis won't do much here if you can, you know, if you know, if you activate Sephira to bring out the Cerevis, you're just gonna end like this and that doesn't do anything for you. Cerevis is uh, it's a good card, but it's not any combo piece. So the best way to Navigate this combo is to go into Skull Guardian. All right. So you got the Skull Guardian off of uh, Sephira. You're going to go ahead and activate the Sephira to Ritual Summon the Skull Guardian. So this goes to Grave as Tribute. Okay. So you have triggers here. You have two triggers. You have Low and uh, Skull Guardian. My personal opinion is to activate the Low first and then Skull Guardian just so you have security from uh, Bell to play around the Bell. Um, and you don't necessarily need the search off of this, it's just additional extension. So if you go one, two, and they Bell this, you're kind of in a tough spot because you're gonna use a normal summon and now you don't have your Omni Negate. So you want the Omni Gate to be priority. So I go one, two, right? With this guy, you can search a couple of things. I usually go for and these are all the options you can search, right? You know them all, we've been going over it pretty much throughout the whole video. Um, sorry, you can't search this, it's be a monster. So these are your four options at this point. Um, let me just see one thing. Okay, yes, you can add itself, just double checking that. I don't wanna give you guys bad information. But these are your options. My personal opinion, since you have the Radiance up, is grab a Cerevis. Okay? Now from here, you're like, oh, and then the low comes up. Okay. All right. That's the, this is the field you want to see. This is the good field. Okay? And it can get better because of the two-card combo that we have going on. <clears throat> so you're going to use the Radiance now to go ahead and shuffle back into the deck. So pretend this is the deck. Shuffle this into the deck to special summon or add to your hand, okay? You can add um, some, let me just make sure, yes. It has to be a monster, so Radiance is not in this. So you can add any of these to the hand or special summon 
only these two, and Saphir's in this as well, this Saphir's in this equation as well. So you can special these three monsters, or you can add these two to the hand because they cannot be special summoned off of the Radiance. Um, so obviously you use Saphira, you already know someone low. Um, Seravis you just put back, so why add it back to the hand? Skull guarding your native on field, you don't really need this. The best option is uh, Fist of Ravis. Okay, so this is shuffled back into the deck. You're gonna add this, or sorry, not add it. You're gonna special it because you can special summon this monster. This is deck graveyard. Okay, what this guy can do is, as cost, return to the hand, special summon from your deck. Um, is it deck or hand? Let me just double check here. Yep, it is deck or hand. You can special summon from your deck or hand a ritual monster. So you can go for the Cerevis or you can go for the Skull Guardian on the field, right? So that's just set up for next turn. You can only do that when your opponent activates the card. So this is your field right now. You have no cards in hand. You have the prayers still in the graveyard. So if this gets removed from the field by your opponent's card effect, you can go ahead and activate prayers to special summon another one from your from your deck or your um, or your hand. Let me just double check. Yep, from your hand or deck. Um, and I I kind of just already run through these plays in my head, so like I'm just double checking to make sure my verbiage is correct for player new players joining. So you want this in graveyard because once a ritual monster is removed from the field. You can go ahead and special one from your hand or deck, a ritual monster, and you can actually summon the ritual monster from it. So that's a good that's a good uh, setup. With this radiance, you can also, if you want to, you can also keep this in hand. So this is a deck. You can also shuffle back a ritual spell. I don't like doing this play because I like it as another interruption, not interruption, but um, as another access to ritual monsters. Rather that be Cervavis or Skull Guardian. But you can shuffle this back into the deck to bring up the this guy. Okay. That way you have an addition additional ritual monster in your hand to protect from um effects that target. But I mean you do have this already, but you can keep this in hand for some reason. You might want to. Now, the disadvantage to this part of it is now you don't have the ritual spell, so if they get rid of this somehow, it's pretty much gone. Or you can just um, add this back to hand to summon another one, right? You can do that. So it's totally up to you whether you want the hand advantage or if you want um, or if you want the, the ritual spell in the graveyard for any type of special summoning that you may you may need or want. This will give you access to two rituals. If you did it this way, this just gives you access to one ritual. Um, completely up to you. Completely up to you. All right. So that's a two card combo using low and barrier. Uh, stick around. I'm going to show you another combo that you can do. Welcome back. We took a little short intermission. But here's another combo you can do with the low and the Sephira. This combo... I, I like to utilize to not have to um, commit my normal summon, okay? Uh, it does play in the drill, so keep in mind on that. But what you do is you go ahead and you, you really don't care, but let's just go ahead and show you. You're going to activate the Sephira from him, send this, and you're going to add Skull Guardian, okay? Say you get drilled here. Doesn't really matter because you already have your combo, right? You can go ahead and activate Sephira, virtual summon this by tributing this, right? You can't add here, but you can trigger low. Low comes out, and then you can either go ahead and place the radiance or the uh, the barrier. Okay, if you get drilled, it might not be worth going for the barrier. Um, your things will be able to get targeted, but uh, in my personal opinion, I would go for the radiance. But let's say you went barrier. Okay, you pretty much end there, right? With this combo, you can't do much more, right? Because you got drilled. But say you, um, say you got drilled still. Uh, you go radiance. 
you can go shuffle this back into the deck. Sorry, I keep on putting that as my vanished, this is vanished. Shuffle that back into the deck and then you can go ahead and get your old guy, okay? Um, now, if you still want the protection, there is an option here to go for the barrier, right? You can go, and mind you, this is one, two, three, this is the third summon. You can go into Dynamundo, or Dynamondo, however you want to say it, right? On your fourth summon, okay, and then pass, right? You pass, draw phase, you activate Dynamundo, try to get Skull Guardian to special, say that goes through, you trigger low, you don't get the search off this because it wasn't ritual summoned. Um, you trigger low and then you activate your low effect, you get your barrier. Okay, now you're protected in draw phase from targeting effects, okay? The only thing that stops this play is maybe a DD Crow, a Bestial, you know, that targets those cards specifically, or also a Bell, okay? Bell does stop low from coming out from Gregor. So this is what Sephira and low in hand. Now let's say you didn't get drilled. Okay, let's rewind. Put this back over here. Dynamondos over here. Okay, you're here, right? You activate your Sephira. Your ritual is in graveyard. You have these two options to go for. You didn't get drilled. You go barrier the voice's voice, okay? You activate barrier the voice's voice. You have these options here to add. Not the Sravis. Uh, okay. You have these four options plus the Sephira. Uh, you can add any of these with the barrier of the voice's voice. You did not normal summon yet. So what what do you go for here? Um, typically, what I would go for are these two as follow-up. Okay, because this would be just sitting in your hand. You already normal summoned. This could be follow-up as well. Um, but it's kind of redundant to have another one. And then Skull Guardian, you already have on the field. You kind of want to keep this in deck for the prayers. Okay, so I'll put these over here. Um, so you could still end up on basically full combo without using the risk of Dynamondo. Right? You didn't get drilled. You already used Sephira. So... I think Radiance is the best choice here. Just go ahead and set it, and then you can activate it on your opponent's turn. Okay? You can still go into Dynamondo for double protection to get another one of Barrier, because people like to out this card pretty easily with Cosmic Cyclone, or this can be targeted, so they can still target this. If you want to be risky and go into Dynamondo, and then go ahead and get another Barrier plus this, then uh, totally up to you. But with this Radiance, you have access to shuffle this back and still get uh, Grandpa Serratus on the field, okay? Um, this is typically the setup you want. You have a lot of interactions here. You can bounce into a Serratus or another Skull Guardian. You can pop. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's just options here. You have the Omni Negate, 4100 Towers, non-targetable. Everything here is non-targetable. So, yeah, that's the options you can do with the Sephira and a low in hand. I just showed Sephira and a low. Here's Sephira and any of these three cards. It could be Seravis, it could be the Skull Guardian, or it can be the Barrier. Okay, each of these um, have their unique properties and what you can do. Um, and they typically get you to where you need to be. So, let's say you have Sephira, we'll do one of them quickly each at a time. So let's do Sephira and Low. What you're gonna do here is you kind of have to play into Droll. If you have these two cards in your hand, no matter what, you're gonna have to play into a Droll. Okay, so I think the best value that you get starting is Sephira. So you go Sephira, um, you send this to the graveyard, the prayers, and then you add yourself uh, either one. Uh, in this case, you go Scroll Guardian. Okay. Now from here, you activate the barrier. Uh, you go ahead and search out your low. And then, boom, there you have it. The ritual summon. You send the low. Summon. Bring this out. Trigger to add anything. You can add the Cerevis for this example's sake. Okay. And then you trigger low. Go ahead and get the Radiance. 
Shuffle this back into the deck to get your, your old guy. And boom. So now you have uh, this as your setup from the Sephira and uh, the Barrier. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is back over here. It goes over here, Sephira's out here. Load over here. Okay. Let's say these two are in your hand, right? Um, you go ahead and you activate Sephira, send this to the graveyard. Uh, you add the Cerevis to your hand, because it has to be a ritual. You activate the Sephira. Summon this by sending the Cerevis trigger to add your low. You have not normal summoned yet, so you're gonna normal. Activate, you're gonna go either here or you can go Radiance. Depends on what situation you want. Do you want your protection or do you wanna go and extend a little bit further? I typically go Radiance and then do the play. I'm gonna shuffle back this time the Cerevis into the Cerevis into the deck. You go ahead and special out the Grandpa. And then you can go down to Mondo here if you want to get the, the barrier, okay? Or you can just leave this as the field. And then you have prayers as your, you know, if you need to ritual summon again or whatever you need to do. Or if you want to go the other route, just for some protection, you summon the low, you go barrier, okay? Barrier can search you the radiance to set. And then you're gonna have to do this on their turn to get the grandpa. This is in, this is in graveyard. You're gonna have to do this on their turn to get the uh, this guy out. But um, either way, you know, you kind of get to where you want to be. This way might be a little bit safer, just because you have the barrier up and guarding your your light monsters. So that's um, that's the other combo with just a uh, guardian. Okay, so now you have Cerevis and um, Sephira. Uh, as always, you're gonna start Sephira, dump, and then here you're gonna add Skull Guardian, and then you're gonna realize that it gets a little bit repetitive, but activate uh, to get the Skull Guardian, Skull Guardian effect, get low to hand, activate low, and then here we are again with the same two options. Um, let's go this option this time. So you go barrier, uh, barrier search the trap, set the trap, and then on their turn, you can go ahead and activate the trap. Shuffle back into the deck to go ahead and get your grandpa. Now the good thing about this is you can do grandpa and still have. I keep on calling this grandpa. This is Cerevis, but you know I'm just calling him grandpa because he's older. But you still have your your access to another ritual spell that you shuffle back in. I mean ritual monster. And then your ritual spells has um, the ability to activate the banish once this is like removed from the field somehow and you can get another one out okay so as you can tell Sephira is really good in this deck it does allow you to access your engine without having low in hand i just showed you with three different other cards um so yeah that's like an engine ways to get your combo out now let's check out some of the other engines that we have in this deck now we have the Diviner. Um, you can play this package, you don't have to. I think it's a really good package to play and it synergizes extremely, extremely well with this deck. So I opted to play it. Let me show you what you can do with this one card. Okay, so you're gonna go to Diviner. Activate Diviner effect on summon to dump the Trios from deck to graveyard. Uh, you have priority to go ahead and tribute as cost to summon out the Trios, okay? Diviner activates since it was tributed. You can go ahead and special summon a level uh, two or lower fairy monster from your deck. And boom, there you have it. That's the connection. That's the bridge. All right. When low summoned, obviously you can go two ways. You can go Radiance or Barrier. Uh, let's go for the Barrier. Okay. You definitely want to go Barrier this way because um, you want your Skull Guardian. Okay. So from barrier, what you're gonna active, what you're gonna add, is of course the one and only Sephira. You're gonna activate. You're gonna send 
the, tra uh, the um, ritual spell to add the guardian. And then you're gonna go ahead and ritual summon. Now there's two ways you can go here. To play around certain hand traps, like Bestials, DD Crow, Bell. If you want to play around those, you go ahead and tribute off this. It gets banished when it leaves the field. The Trios. So you can tribute off the Trios just to keep your low on field and summon and boom, automatically online. You have your, your Omni Gate and you can still search. Um, when you search for this, it's either, I think it's just good to go for follow up. Either either the low or another Sephira. Because you have your combo already. You can't search the trap. So either one of these. Um, okay. Or you can go ahead, if you're feeling a little bit more risky, you can tribute off the, when you activate Sephira, you can tribute off the low to ritual summon this guy and then activate low to come back in defense. Um, it was already in defense, but you can still go ahead and search. I think you're playing into a little bit more things here for an extra body. The extra body doesn't do much for you in this scenario. But let's say you search low or, or Sephira. Okay. At this point, uh, you're pretty much just sitting, uh, sitting pretty good. Okay. Sitting pretty good. If you need to push for a game... For some reason and you open up the diviner you you can opt to do a play that's kind of risky i mean you already have a big body here 41 but you can go low oh this gets banished low in the trios to make your your chaos angel okay you can do that to banish a card this is still not game Right, 41 plus 35 is 76. So you're still missing 400 damage. You won't be able to, you won't be able to push for, for, for game here with just, a, with just a diviner. But here you have it. That's, that's what you can end on or you can end on, you know, the low and the trios or you could just end on uh, the low, low and the guardian. Okay, so that's a diviner. Let me just go ahead in and set up for the next one. Here we are. We have a pretty cool uh, three card combo to set up a pretty nice board. I'm going to show you how it's done. Um, and it does include diviner. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at how to do this board. Okay, so looking at the hand here, what you're looking to do here is have access to ritual summon a monster without using your normal summon. Right, because you want your diviner to be your normal summon. So you go ahead and activate your Sephira, you dump the prayers, and then you're gonna add your guardian. Okay. So now you set up a way to ritual summon without normal summoning. You're gonna activate your Sephira here, setting the low for your guardian. Okay, you're gonna do trigger one, trigger two. Okay, trigger two uh, doesn't really necessarily have to be a specific card. It can be low, it can be um, be Sir it can be low, it could be the Seravis, or you know, it could be another Seravis here. That's just for, for combo sake. Let's just go ahead and add a Seravis. It doesn't really matter what you add. Okay, so we'll put it face down. Okay, it doesn't matter, but you have an extra card here. Okay. And then your low comes out. And then you're gonna activate your low to go ahead and get. Now it's important here to get the radiance, okay? The radiance is important here for this specific combo. Um, but let's show you what you can do if you get a regular barrier first. You get the barrier, you know, you can go ahead and activate, add the radiance. Um, it's pretty much all you, you're, you're gonna wanna do. You can add another Sephira, but radiance is the better uh, thing to add here. But barrier just gives you protection. Let's show you the cool combo. So go ahead and get your radiance, right? This is your setup so far. Sephira is banished because uh, her effect. Okay, cool thing you can do here, right? Is go ahead and normal summon diviner. 
you have a bunch of fairies you could dump to the graveyard. So we're going to go ahead and dump another diviner. Yes, you could dump herself. Now she's level four. You're going to activate your radiance. You're going to shuffle back either the Cerevis you added off of this or the ritual spell. I'm going to do the Cerevis. Okay. And then from deck, you special summon your special Sephira here. Okay. I could you probably know where this is going. You use these to the synchro summon. Into your Baron. And now from here, you can go safely into your Dynamondo play. So you go here into Dynamondo. Okay. On their turn, you're going to activate Dynamondo. If they use something, you can negate it. But you go here into Skull Guardian and then into a low. And the low will get you finally the last piece of the puzzle, which is your barrier. Okay, that's a three card combo. You need Sephira, you need low, and you need Diviner to be able to pull that off. Um, obviously, if you have more cards in your hand that, that allows you to do that, you can do it that way. But yeah, man, this is, I think, a nice bread and butter combo. It, it does take three cards, so you're not going to see it often. But if you do have access to it, this is the way to do it. Um, yeah, so I'm just showing you the cool tricks that you can do with the deck. All right, let's move on. Your next play or engine that I have within this deck is the branded engine. Okay, the, the engine doesn't consist of many cards. It's just, it's just three branded fusion, one fallen of Albaz, and one Jogging the Spiritualist. And some of you are probably like, you know, sighing right now, but Jogging is a really good card in this deck. So let's go ahead and show you what one branded fusion can do. Okay, so you activate branded fusion. Uh, let's go with, there's two routes you can go here. Let's go the Mirror Jade route. Um, here's what you can send, right? You obviously send the Fallen of Albaz, which is gonna be right here. So you can send Fallen of Albaz, and then two options you can send. There's obviously more than two, but let's start right here. These are, one of the twos that you're going to be wanting to send. Okay. Now with this, what you can do is, uh, oh, well, I guess you can also send Trios, but let's just stick with these two. You're not going to send Trios often. Okay. So right here, boom, these two automatically give you access to low and grave, which is um, like really good. You're going to want to do that for your turn because you want it to be in circulation. To bring out the Albion Dragon, and then obviously you could do Albion and Fallen of Albaz into Mirror Jade. Okay, so you, now you have Low Engrave, you have a Mirror Jade up, and um, so if you have other, I mean, obviously you're gonna have other cards in hand. If there's a way you can get out Skull Guardian, your Low comes back, and then you can use your your Low effects. Okay, the other route you can go is Sephira. And Albaz, this is a deck, right? So you go here to go into Albion, and then Odyssey to Albion, Fallen of Albaz to go into the Mirror Jade. Now, the cool thing about having Sephira in Graveyard is now you can go ahead and Ritual Summon if you have the cards available to get the Skull Guardian onto the field. Skull Guardian can search you, right? Let me just show you. So if you ritual summon, you, you have something in hand, say like a tree house or whatever, something that doesn't really matter, to get your Skull Guardian. Your Skull Guardian will activate its effect to go ahead and get you your low. You haven't normal summoned yet, so you normal summon your low. Um, use low effect, you can get barrier. Barrier can go ahead and activate grab your Sephira or the trap you can get the trap or you can get another Sephira since you haven't activated Sephira's effect you can right to get that in graveyard along with the ritual spell and then that can search you either a Saravis 
or a um, Skull Guardian. And then you can go ahead and you can't ritual summon again with the Sephiro, but um, you can go ahead and pass there if you like. Or you can go down. You can't go down a Mondo, but you, yeah, you just go ahead and pass there. You have a uh, ritual spell engraved, so it sets you up for next turn. So that's one way you can do it. Or you can go instead of going for Sephira, you get the trap, and then you just simply set the trap. Okay, so you don't have to do Dynamondo. So yeah, that's that's the cool part of the branded aspect here. Um, that's what you can do for the Mirror Jade line. All right. Now I'm gonna set up for the next line. Now Brandon Fusion, right? You activate Brandon Fusion. You're gonna go ahead and send your Albaz and your Javelin of the Spiritualist. This is gonna allow you to get out your your Sanctifier Dragon. Okay. Now by itself, it's not good, right? You just have your Sanctifier Dragon, and that's it. You don't you can't really do much else. On your opponent's draw phase, you target these two monsters. You give your opponent the Fallen of Albaz, and you give yourself the Javelin. Uh, to floodgate, they cannot special summon monsters um, while this card's face up on the field. Okay, it's not lingering like a gimmick puppet, but it is strong. So now they have an Albaz, you have your Jalgen. Where this comes really into play is if also you have your, you know, your low, your Skull Guardian, and then you have your protection back here. Okay, that's where it really becomes strong because now with the barrier on the field, this card cannot be targeted for attacks or effects. They have to target this card. Okay, so there are fields where I end like this all the time and my opponent just scoops up the game because they can't do anything about the field. They would have to out this out. They have to try to out this card. And so majority, a lot of the times actually is I would find a way to go ahead and get out another uh, barrier because now it's really game. How you, unless they have a Harpy's Feather Duster, which I could just negate, and it's at one, however. Um, if they find a way to negate this, or you know, they try to impermanent, I negate it, and then the Harpy's Feather Duster, then that's the, really the only way they can get out of this situation. However, with an Omni Gate protection, um, they can't impermanent because it can't be targeted. This field is super strong and will win you games, promise. All right, so that's the value that I see in the branded package. So I'm going to keep on playing this package. I am tinkering with the deck a little bit, you know, just perfecting it, trying to make it um, as consistent as possible. But these are, you know, the combos that I'm seeing in the deck. And I've been finding real good success with it, especially even against uh, Fire King, because Fire King will lose to this card. So this, this is my interpretation of the deck. And what I'm going to be playing going forward. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this video or learn a thing or two. Uh, I am going to be playing this deck. The whole format. I'm not switching to over to any deck. Any other deck. So uh, hopefully you guys can see that I am putting in the effort. Into learning and into making this deck as good as possible. I'm not going to go over the other stuff in the deck. Like... Uh, like the hand trap ratio, I think that's subjective. Uh, Pre-prep of rights is dependent on really your your hand. Um, talents, I'm thinking about cutting. But yeah, pre-prep is really subjective towards your hand and what you can do with your hand. It plays really hard into drill as well. But as you can see, everything else is pretty much hand traps. Um, so we took a deep dive into the deck. I appreciate you guys sticking around. Hopefully you stayed until the end of the video. This one might be long. Hopefully I, I sped up near the end. But appreciate you guys. Thank you. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.